Hey there, Earthlings. Thanks for tuning in to the Barada Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Barada, where we talk about health, happiness, and anything else that's important to us humans. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast by visiting thebarado.com or just click the little subscribe button wherever you listen to the podcast. And be sure to check out my Instagram at thebarado for all the latest videos and content. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. It's just, just funny. It's just funny. You know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. Come here. Come here, though. Ladies and gentlemen, happy day. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in to the show. Uh, Today should be a a relatively quick one. I wanted to kind of get this out because I've been gone for a few days. Uh, If you follow me on Instagram, I've been traveling again for work, which has been interesting. Uh, We're going to get into that because, holy shit, is it a different world? Not surprisingly, but uh, there's definitely been some pretty wicked changes. So I wanted to kind of dip into that. But of course, as I was traveling, if you guys know, I I didn't travel anywhere without my stupid dietary restrictions. Uh, So I I needed super fat to get me through the week. Uh, I traveled up to New York and uh, I needed super fat to get me through because when, uh, you know, there's no time to eat or it's too expensive to eat, especially in New York. And I want something on the go where I don't have to like travel with a massive bag and like have a foot long sub. Uh, I just want something quick. I got the nut butters. I got the keto cookie bites. I got all kinds of goodies uh, from super fat. So they have an entire portfolio of keto, vegan and paleo friendly products, including nut butters, which I definitely pack with me everywhere. They have a new uh, package refresh, refresh, which is really cool because uh, they're even more convenient pouches. Uh, the same ounces as previously before, same flavors, all that. It's just uh, it, it's a much more convenient package. So you can check out superfat.com, and you can use the code BARARDO10 to get 10% off your order. And uh, that's just for being uh, a listener of the show. Congrats on that discount. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Again, superfat.com. Use the code BARARDO10, B-E-R-A-R-D-O-1-0. Okay, so I, I ended up going to New York. Uh, I did it for, through work which uh, it's a new gig, as some of you may have heard, if you've heard uh, the the latest podcast. So I recommend you go back and check that out. But uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. New York, you know, we go all the time. I've been, you know, uh, aside from the pandemic, I think I used to go like on average, um, you know, even with uh, Brenda and I, I might have gone like two or three times, I think, with Brenda, maybe just once, once by myself. But uh, I used to go a lot. And I had a lot of buddies that used to live up there. When the pandemic happened, they ended up moving for reasons I'm going to get into. But uh, this was the first time that I've actually been here since the pandemic. And I got to tell you guys, it was disappointing. It really was. And it wasn't necessarily just New York. I mean, just the traveling in general. Uh, I flew Delta and uh, I love Delta. I don't think they did anything wrong. I really enjoyed how they handled everything and, of course, much better than Southwest and some other airlines. Uh, so Delta did great. So shout out to, to all the um, the flight attendants and the pilots because they made everything very seamless and easy. Uh, the mask thing was was interesting because I've, you know, obviously we've been wearing masks for a while. So it's nothing new. But it's weird when you're in such an enclosed space like that. Technically, you're not even supposed to, like, remove the mask unless you're eating which again is is still crazy to me, or drinking, because you could still spread like in between doing that stuff. I know it's it's probably more for security purposes, like making people feel secure. secure. You know, you got to think of like the reason we have metal detectors. That first happened when, I forget what year it was. It was before 9-11 actually. Uh, We got more strict with 9-11, but I think it first started when that shoe bomb Went through the airport. You guys remember that? I think that's when metal detectors first started being a thing. So we kind of did it like as security to make us feel secure. So a lot of that is with the mask. I think you should still wear a mask. And I did, of course. I mean, from a science perspective, 
You can go back and forth on this. But on science, I mean, there's not a whole lot of science that makes sense for this. Because again, you go to like a restaurant and you wear a mask, right? And then you eat, you take it off. But then you go to the bathroom, you got to put a mask on. But I mean, while you're eating, you could still cough, sneeze. You're still talking. You're still spraying stuff. Someone walks past you, it gets you on your hand. Next thing you know, you got COVID on your forearm and then, you know, you're screwed, right? I don't know. I think if we're going to do a mask, let's keep a mask on and never take it off because the fact that we're able to take it on and off is just a little funky to me. It's a little hard to believe. But I mean, I still did it, but it was it was tough at the uh, at the airport, I got to tell you, because obviously it's mandated. Um, and then when you're on the plane, you got to keep it on the entire time, even if you're sleeping. Oof, man, it was just frustrating because that's a long flight. I mean, it's not too long, but I mean, it was a movie. It was a full movie. I forget what I watched. I think I watched, oh, I watched uh, Ted. Funny movie. Not Ted 2. The OG. But I watched that. I watched the entire movie and I had a little time left over where I just uh, enjoyed a, a nice little podcast. Podcasts are good for you. So that was weird to have the mask on the entire time in the plane because you're just inhaling your own goo. And, uh, you know, I, I brush my teeth beforehand, you know, so it wasn't bad or anything. <laughs> you're just inhaling your own air. It's just not good for you. You want oxygen. You want you want oxygen flow. And it's just not it's not a healthy thing to be inhaling that. So that was a little funky to do that. So that was frustrating, but I got past it. And then, you know, of course, you go outside. Whew, you get a little breather. But then I had to call a lift. And up in New York, they are crazy strict with the lifts, by the way, if you haven't been up there. Um, not surprisingly, the blue states are a little bit more crazier than normal. You know, they had you wear not just the mask, but windows are down. And it was a little chilly. Not bad. But windows got to be down. Mask got to be on. And then in some Ubers, most Ubers, uh, they had the, uh, like, taxi cab plexiglass. Plexiglass? What? Plexiglass. <laughs> so they had that up as well. So man, oh man, was there protection. Uh, but again, this is all good. This is, you know, it's supposed to make us secure. I get it. But the reason I bring all this up is... You know, there's, uh, we're hitting an interesting, interesting time because New York in particular and California, and there's some other states as well, um, we're in this weird situation where I don't know, I don't know what we're doing and I don't know if we're, we're really thinking about like the long-term effects of what's happening, not just with the mask and all this bullshit, but this was the first time I visited New York after the pandemic and I was there right before the pandemic with the wife. And of course it was totally different, but it's kind of scary. It's very scary. You know, it's, uh, especially with like with the homeless population, I'm going to get into an article here in a sec, but, uh, I've never seen it this bad. This is, this is really rough. Uh, I plan on having one of my buddies who used to live in uh, New York and we're going to talk about it, uh, amongst other things. But this was pretty rough. The subways. Uh, I didn't even take the subway. I normally do because it's cheap and it's fun. But, you know, there's been so many uh, stabbings. And the homeless is just running rampant in the subway that even locals are scared of it. Which is kind of crazy because, like, if you lived in New York, depending on where you live, you, I mean, you want to go places, right? And usually it's the subway is where you go. But during the the pandemic, um, you know, because the, because the previous mayor, uh, which I, th I think, uh, they just reelected a guy actually. Um, but the previous mayor released, um, prisons and the, uh, the insane asylum, a lot of mental patients. And I think from what an Uber driver told me is they, they gave each person a thousand dollars as kind of like a way to get started. So now you got these these folks that are either criminals or, you know, mentally something's wrong with them where they need help, but they got released because I guess the mayor didn't want them to get COVID. And this is kind of like a scare a scare tactic, not necessarily, you know, you could say what you want about mayors and, and politicians. I think the vast majority of them want to do good, but the problem with something like this is it's a scare tactic that they're following because they think it's right. Or maybe they're doing it on purpose for some other agenda, agenda. But they think it's right. But now they're affecting everybody else involved. We're doing this whole pandemic thing, and we're protecting a small portion of the population. 
because they're either overweight, they have pre-existing conditions, they're older, and we're protecting them by putting in these mandates and things like that. But there's more people that don't need protection. Younger kids, you know, healthy, young adults. There's more of those folks than people that are going to get the COVID. Now we're revolving the world around a small portion of the population. I don't know if that's the right way to do things. You know, it's like the previous mayor of New York. He's changing all these rules and laws and doing this stuff to help a small portion. Like, but you're not thinking about the locals, the New Yorkers. And that's kind of what gets to me a little bit because I have a lot of friends that used to live up in New York and still do. Like, just to kind of give you, like, a quick rundown. So during the pandemic, they expanded all the restaurants in the streets. So, like, if you go to New York, most restaurants, I think it's, like, 80-some percent of restaurants that are on the street, which all of them pretty much are, they built these structures that fit, you know, 15, 20, 30 seats, or excuse me, tables. Each table has four. So, you know, for the restaurant, it's awesome because now they can have people outside, you know, unless it's the winter and it gets really bad. But these are permanent structures that are built in. Problem is, though, if you go down like a place like Broadway or 5th or 44th, you know, near uh, the U.N., if you go down all these big popular places, especially like downtown, but from downtown all the way up to midtown, but the entire state, each street that would normally have, let's say, two rows of traffic, plus you get two rows, one on each side, of parking, now those those rows for parking are where the restaurants are. So the locals got nowhere to park. Do you think about that for a second? New York City traffic was horrible when it was two lanes with places to park. Now these poor locals don't have places to park, so what are they going to do? Well, they're going to have to pay for parking instead of parking on the street. You know, they have to pay for garage parking, which is outrageous in New York. I mean, it's like 500 bucks a month to park your car. And then, you know, you're probably like, well, Tony, no big deal, right? Because they can, you know, park their car, and then if they got to go 20, 30, 40 blocks, they just take the subway. Yeah, normally that's the case. But the problem is now the subways are so bad because they're filled with homeless folks because the pandemic is just, it's killing people up there. And in these expensive states like California and New York, you know, you could say if it's, oh, because it's blue or red. No, they're just expensive. That's a big portion of it. And then you factor in the you know political views, that makes it worse. But the issue is places like California and New York, it's expensive to live when things are normal, people. But obviously, shit has, like, escalated like crazy. And things are getting worse and worse in these big places because they're expensive to live there. So now you're making these locals pay even more money because now they have to pay for parking, right? 400 500 bucks, But they can't take the subway because it's so dangerous. So now they have to either buy cars because they normally would take the subway. So now they're buying cars. The Uber and Lyft driver told me that more people are buying cars than ever in New York because they don't want to take the subway. But what does that mean for locals? Well, now there's more traffic. <laughs> so if there's more traffic, now people are on the road more. They're stuck in instead of an hour and a half in traffic. Now sometimes it's two, three hours in traffic. I mean, if you know New York, I went from Midtown where I was staying, where the UN is, to the World Trade Center where my buddy was staying. I went from there, which is only about four miles, by the way. And that took me almost an hour and a half each time in a car. Because uh, I wasn't going to take the subway. I saw one look at that subway. I was like, whoa, I'm not doing it. So, again, if you're a local, <sighs> Godspeed. Because, you know, if you buy a car, now you're fucked because you're in a car for even longer. Right? And then what does that mean? If you're in a car for longer, you're like, hey, no big deal. You just leave earlier. Come on, man. You've been in traffic. You know what that's like. It increases your stress level. It increases your depression. So if you're on the way to work, now you got to get there a little bit earlier. Now you're upset when you get to work. Maybe your work product, you know, your productivity is going down. And then, of course, you got to leave at 5 o'clock at uh, rush hour. You're not home till 8 o'clock. So now you're gone from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And your whole day is shot. And that's just not fair. On top of that, just for New York in general, on top of that, now we're factoring in it's one of the most expensive cities in the world. So now you're packing in all this stress on people and you're making them pay a fuck ton of money for everything. 
And by the way, I even heard from my buddy that taxes are going to go up. Gas is going to go up for apartments, for heaters, like where a lot of people live. I mean, taxes continue to raise. The housing market is still just as expensive. It'd be different if maybe you lower your taxes, but you look at a place like New York or California and you're spending, you know, California, I think it's up to 14% uh, for your taxes just for the state, for like a state tax. You know, New, you know, Florida, we're very lucky because we don't have state tax, but uh, for California, 14%. So now you're making less. You might be working less. Maybe you lost your job, God forbid. But now you're paying more money in taxes. So if I'm in California, New York, which two of the most popular... Think about that. Two of the most popular states in the world, New York and California, also not just the most popular, but the most expensive states in the world, have the biggest homeless problem in the country. Like, what the, what am I paying taxes for? Like, if I'm a local, what am I paying taxes for? Well, you know, I have my job now. Right? Like, let's say if I'm a local, what am I going to do? Move? Well, I got my job. If my job's not relocating, what am I going to have to start fresh? So now these locals are stuck in this strange situation where they don't know what to do. It's just, it's just, it's hard to take, man, because it's such a beautiful city. It really is, New York in particular. I was up there all week. I love going there. We used to go there all the time, and it's, it's so beautiful, all parts of it. But then now you see it, and it's just, Hopefully this new mayor cleans up his act, but it's just so tough because are we at the point of no return? You know, it's kind of scary. You know, I'm going to read this quick, uh, quick article and then we'll call it a day, but it's from the coalition for the homeless.org. Um, this page provides an overview of homelessness in New York city. Here you can find the key statistics about New York city, homeless shelter population as a brief description of some of the main factors causing modern homelessness. You can also download a fact sheet uh, attached as well. So here's the basic facts. In recent years, homelessness in New York City has reached the highest levels it's ever been since the Great Depression in 1930. In August 2001, there were 47,916 homeless people, including 14,000 homeless children sleeping each night in the New York City municipal shelter system. A new record of 18,000 single adults slept in shelters in August 2021. Over the course of the city, fiscal year in 2020, over 122,000 different homeless adults and children slept in the New York City's uh, shelter system. This includes more than 39,000 homeless children. Oh, man. That's hard to take, man. Isn't it? That's a lot of kids that are homeless. The number of homeless New Yorkers sleeping each night in the shelters is now 18% higher than it was 10 years ago. Research shows that the primary cause of homelessness, particularly among the families, is the lack of affordable housing. Surveys of homeless families have identified the following major immediate triggering causes of homelessness. Eviction, double up or severe overcrowding housing, domestic violence, job loss, and hazardous housing conditions. Research also shows, compared to homeless families, homeless single adults have much higher rates of severe mental illness, addiction disorders, and other severe health problems. Each night, thousands of unsheltered homeless people sleep on New York City streets, in the subway system, and in public areas. There is no accurate measurement, unfortunately, for New York City's unsheltered homeless population, And recent city surveys significantly underestimate the number of unsheltered homeless New Yorkers, meaning what these numbers I just gave you, all these big numbers, that's what they could track in the shelters. There's countless homeless in New York that we don't even know of. Uh, It continues to read that studies show the large majority of unsheltered homeless New Yorkers, meaning the ones on the street, are people living with mental illness, illness or with other severe health problems. Black and Hispanic Latinx New Yorkers are disproportionately affected by homelessness. Approximately 57% of heads of households in the shelters are black, 32% are Hispanic, 7% are white, less than 1% of the Asian American and Native American population, and 4% are unknown race or ethnicity. So there's a whole fact sheet you can look up, coalitionforthehomeless.org. 
that's where I got this article if you want to fact check that. But it's just, um, man, it's hard to swallow because, you know, it's, it's again, it's such a great city. And it, uh, I wanted to do this because it really, it kind of hurt me a little bit. And I'm, I'm sure it's hurting locals more than me. I mean, I'm, I only go up there for leisure every now and again. But I think we're, we're just at the point where it's kind of, we should be worried. There's no reason to panic, you know. Uh, we don't need to panic. Everyone calm down. But uh, I think we should be worried because it, after everything uh, our country's been through and after all the smart people that have come in and out of office, and there's a lot of dumb people, of course, still to the day, but there's so many great things that our country has done and continues to do. It just kind of makes me worry that this stuff is going on. And you might not know it because maybe you haven't been up to New York, but I, I encourage you to look into it. And, of course, look into what California is. And, uh, of course, there's numerous states. I mean, Oregon, um, uh, Seattle, you know, there's just tons of states that are, are dealing with this. I'm not specifically talking about New York. I'm only saying that because I was just there and I needed to talk about it. Can I get it off my chest? But I recommend you check it out because... It, it only makes you think a little bit why this homelessness thing, it's so scary. It really is because we, it's getting so bad and we don't know what to do. Like there's people smarter than me and you that are in charge of this stuff. And these poor New Yorkers are spending so much money. And these California residents are spending so much money on taxes. Like where are they going? And meanwhile, the streets are garbage. Like places like Chicago, Detroit. Like we want to go to Mars. <laughs> like there, there's people investing into leaving this planet, but we can't even fix New York fucking city. It used to be the most wealthiest, well known. I mean, my whole family, my 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 father, his family. You know, uh, he was born in Jersey. You know, his his mother and father came from Italy. I would imagine they went through Ellis Island, like most. I don't, I don't know if that's a fact. I don't remember. But, of course, they lived in Jersey. Without New York, where would they be? Without Jersey, where would they be? Like, I mean, there's millions of immigrants over the years that New York was the place that they, they started. They started businesses, and then they were able to, to grow and then, you know, eventually move on to bigger and better things and leave their family with some. But now we're letting this city get destroyed. I don't get it. It's so strange to me. And places like California and Chicago and Seattle and Portland. I mean, there's more countries, or excuse me, there's more states and cities that are fucked up than there probably is like nice parts of the city, I would imagine. I don't think we see it because we've been in our bubbles for so long. But if you go outside your bubble and if you go to like a poor part of your city, it's worse than what it was two years ago, three years ago. So what's causing it? Is it a lack of money? Well, I don't get it because we were able to pay unemployment like crazy. So why can't our government print money to fix up New York? Why can't the people that live in New York, you know, why can't they pay half the taxes that they normally pay just to get, get, keep their head above water? What are we doing? If we're able to print money for unemployment, why can't we help out New Yorkers and California residents? Detroit, Michigan. It's just so confusing to me. It really is. And I'm, I'm not smart enough to understand it. And I wish I, I was able to get someone on the podcast that can break it down for me. But I know it's political, but I just don't get what. Why are you in politics if your main goal is to not help the people that pay taxes? Like, that's what we're here for. We're here to pay taxes to help your city, right? To build roads and to, to build schools and to take care of the community. But if I'm in New York and California, I pay the most taxes than any other state, but they're the shittiest states right now. I just don't, it's frustrating. It really is because I couldn't enjoy New York like I used to. And uh, it was sad. It was very sad to see. You know, I had a couple of buddies that used to live up in New York that some live in Florida, some live, uh, you know, out West. Um, I got a couple of buddies that live in California right now and they're miserable. Uh, one of them's doing pretty well, <laughs> but you know, it's not easy. Uh, he'd be doing a lot better if he was back in Florida. But it just makes you, it makes you think. It's like, what are we doing? Is this why we're put on this earth? 
so these poor folks can work their ass off, pay a shit ton of taxes to the government, and then nothing ever happens. It's just crazy. You know, when you think it's really bad where you live or you don't get paid enough, I just encourage you to look at other states because uh, there's a lot of other places just in our backyard, just at home here in the country that uh, are dealing with a lot a lot worse shit than you are. So uh, have some perspective, help out where you can, educate yourself so that we can hopefully fix this one day and get back to enjoying this country the way it was. I don't know. That's all I got. Hopefully you guys stay safe up there for my New Yorkers and for people dealing with some shit. We love you. Stay strong. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Peace.